Before we begin this evening's video address, if you're not already subscribed to this YouTube channel, go ahead and subscribe now and be sure to hit the bell notification icon so you can be told when a new video drops. Also, if you're already subscribed, check and make sure that YouTube hasn't unsubscribed you. Also, be sure to give the video a like. The white supremacists hate that. Now, that said, everyone has seen the uprising taking place in Minnesota, and it's already spread across the river into St. Paul. This is not a riot. A riot is when it happens for no reason. Whenever you have white people who are angry because of a pumpkin festival or Burning Man or something, those are riots. Riots have no rhyme or reason. What's happening here is a reaction. A reaction to the fact that there are armed racist thugs who the state is giving a free pass to with a license to kill. In fact, the state is encouraging them to do so. This isn't happening as an incident or a one-off. The state is encouraging them to. The public fully understands this is state policy being carried out. Whenever you see the police doing this, the state is behind them because if the state didn't want them to do it, it would punish them for it. You know, kind of like all of those AR-15 gun-toting good old boys in Lansing, Michigan, who charged into the state house, the very seat of Michigan's government, where all of their political bigwigs supposed to be getting together to decide policy, and they allowed a whole bunch of gun-toting white men to go in there and start yelling and screaming and spreading coronavirus amongst their inbred selves. Now, would they even allow one black man to go into the state house brandishing a weapon? Of course not. So this is state policy. There are those who white supremacy has made this decision that, hey, the highest value on our totem pole happens to be that if you're white, you do not get punished because if you start reining in white people's behavior, well, when it comes time for them to do all sorts of nasty and horrible things in order to maintain, uphold, and perpetuate white supremacy, well, they'll hesitate because you spent so much time reining them in. So it's best that you go ahead and have a few wild dogs who get off their leash every once in a while. There, that's a, It's a small price to pay to have a Elliot Rogers or or to have a Timothy McVeigh, or to have some other white supremacist go and shoot up a school or something. It's a small price to pay to have a Nicholas Cruz or what have you, if that's the price you have to pay to maintain white supremacy. Okay, so they shut up a school full of kids, drop in the bucket. Don't lose sight of the big picture. That's white supremacy's M.O. as it pertains to violence. So why is it that the murder of George Floyd has had such a reaction. Well, it's not because of George Floyd in specific. It's simply a matter of this is what happens when you have a steady drip drip of these things. Yes, it is true that if something continues long enough, people become inured to it. But the problem is if it's something that's particularly egregious, if it continues, people suddenly might remember, hey, well, why the hell is this even going on? And the people are reacting. You see... Up there in Minnesota, you got the DA, the state's attorney. He already is telegraphing what it is he expects to do. The old game is not going the way that it used to. You got all these places where they understand, hey, the police have to have unfettered use of violence that will go unpunished. And, well, we have to make sure that the people are on board. So we're going to go ahead and have a show trial so that we can say, see, the people are on board. The people support this violence. Yeah, except that hasn't been going so well lately, has it? Because of the work of the black media and the black grassroots, we've been reaching these jury pools. We've been getting the message out, letting people know we know exactly what the hell you're up to. And we've been interrupting their operations. So these DAs are finding that it's harder and harder to try to throw a trial, to derail a prosecution at the grand jury phase. Okay, well, maybe we'll go on to the trial jury phase and try to rig it there uh, during the voir dire process. It's getting harder and harder. And that being the case, now that they see that, well, we can't just work hand in hand with the defense counsel to get the guy off the hook, the jury's going to convict no matter what. Now it's a matter of, well, well we, got, we got to do something. Uh, we'll, we'll stall for time. We'll stall for time. That stupid mayor up there in Minnesota, he's playing a game. He's conning people. Why hasn't the attorney general of the state stepped in? Because you know damn well if that had been a black man who had been accused of killing a cop, they would have already had him in jail and wouldn't have needed a DA to, to do anything. The police could have already arrested these animals. So don't play this game of, well, we got to wait for the DA. No, you don't. As a result of this latest egregious anti-black murder that's taken place, things have gotten hot in Los Angeles. They've gotten hot in New York. 
gotten hot in Minnesota. Minnesota was like 30 degrees today, but you damn sure wouldn't have known by looking. And of course, Texas, there are a whole bunch of places that could be flashpoints, and that's what the white media and the enforcement arm of white supremacy are concerned about. Have you been seeing how they've been trying to figure out how to tamp all this down? Their usual cadre of online and broadcast sycophant suck-ups and white supremacists hasn't been enough. They, they can't get any traction, and this is scaring them. They're getting no traction. Then again, they didn't really have any traction. They just had the illusion of it because the machine that the black grassroots was putting in place wasn't up to full steam yet. We hadn't reached critical mass. Now we have. The white media is trying to help the thugs and blue out, trying to help gin up some phony sympathy for them. Oh, well, the, uh, every cop is now jumping in front of a camera now. You see how these guys are jumping in front of a camera? Everybody from the meter maid to the police chief, all to the police commissioner, all of them jumping in front of a camera now. Oh, what we saw was very disturbing. Oh, it was so terrible. We're not like that at all. Now, why are they doing this all of a sudden? Why are they so eager to try to win over the public? Because before now, all we heard was the police do a dangerous job. How dare you question us? Dude, you don't have all the facts. If you knew what we knew, you can't question us. We are highly trained, highly trained, highly trained, you know. We're above reproach. And these black people, they're all criminals. Don't well, So-and-so has a rap sheet. If he doesn't have a rap sheet, well, you know, how's the cop supposed to know that? It will. Blue lives matter. Well, except when the cops are committing suicide. Side, which is the leading cause of death for police, by the way. That's what we've been hearing up until now. The police had no problem wagging their fingers at the public. They had no problem being strident, belligerent, and arrogant as far as they were concerned. Well, the white media is backing us up, and they're on our side, and we know the DAs, they're not under much pressure. <laughs> Yet. But now that the worm has turned, now that things going in the opposite direction, now the police, they're the ones trying to cop a plea. Now, all of a sudden, they're officer friendly. Oh, yeah, they wouldn't dare break the, they wouldn't cross the blue line before. No cracks in the blue wall. Yeah, now all of a sudden, they're singing a different tune, or at least they're pretending to, and they're trying to see if this will work. Because they understand that what's happening in Minnesota is now metastasizing and spreading around. This thing, they realize that the exact same problem that the people have in Minnesota is the exact same problem that people got across the United States with racist cops killing black folks. And the exact same way that you had the Minnesota police third precinct under siege to the point where they had to board up the doggone buildings. You should hear what the police were doing for their radio calls. Going, we're about to lose the front in a minute. It's like, yeah, this is like a freaking war zone because they're under siege. But the truth of the matter is they've been waging war on the citizens all this time. Now what's happened is the citizens have said enough. And the torrent of lies and demonization of the victims that the white media has been pulling doesn't wash, hasn't worked, hasn't changed anyone's minds. In fact, it's been a huge part of the problem. It's had the opposite effect of what the white media wanted. Everyone sees that the tide has turned and the police are now going to prison and they can't stop it. But the thing is, this movement hasn't been satisfied. See, white supremacy thought, well, OK, uh, we can't stop some of these anti-black killers from going to prison so we'll try to pretend as if oh everything's changed see it's all fine now and there were just a few bad apples and ooh, you guys caught all those bad apples and now everything is hunky-dory and yet the people have said that's not enough they understand that this is not a few bad apples that what's happened is not just a few bad cops these entire departments are dirty you would be hard-pressed to find a few good cops. You'd be overrun and just drowning in bad ones. And so the people, led by the black grassroots, the moral leaders of the world, we are the ones showing everybody the way. And don't let anybody pretend as if they were in here with us. We've been out here doing the work. The rest of these folk, they're just out here because maybe they, maybe there was some cop who talked to them a way that they didn't like. And, you know, they're, they're trying to swing on our coattails. Don't be letting the rest of these folks try to be tourists, okay? They're trying to be tourists on our justice movement. Do not allow that. The white media is trying to trick people into believing that the thugs in blue are on the side of the people and that ain't going to work. You see Jeff Bezos' media whorehouse, Washington Post, putting out this bullcrap story about how, oh, police chiefs across the country are disgusted by the video of George Floyd being murdered. 
This is the police trying to get out in front of what they see happening because all these police and sheriff's departments know that they behave the same way that the Minnesota PD does in their own cities. And they know that the exact same anger and rage in the streets of Minnesota are also in every street in the United States because of the way that the police behave and because of what the police do. Now, the main person that the Washington Post was trying to trot out to push this phony lying propaganda is Houston's own chief thug, I mean a police chief, Art Acevedo. If you live in Houston, or even pay marginal attention to the police killings of black people there, you know that Acevedo is full of crap. I told you about how in July of 2016, in the waning months of the Obama administration, Alva Brazil, a black man, was gunned down in the street by two white Latino officers in Houston. There's video of the man literally dying with his hands up. They claim, well, he made some sort of move. You watch the video, the dude didn't move. He had his hands up like a goddamn tree. And they murdered him anyway. And the Brazil murder, it's particularly important because Acevedo became police chief just four months after the murder took place. Just four months after Alva Brazil was murdered, this Acevedo character becomes Houston police chief. But uh, has he said one word about it? Has he done anything about it? What has he done to achieve justice in the case of Albert Brazil? Nothing. He hasn't said anything, ain't broke, he ain't crossed that blue line, so we know what his credibility is. And the Washington Compost gave some quotes to a few other chief thugs in blue, but it was weak sauce. Their rhetoric is clearly insincere. If this Acevedo character is really so concerned about police brutality and gunning down innocent people, why was it that he never bothered to mention black people? Everybody went the extra mile to avoid doing that. Oh, they want to talk about, oh, how, how disgusting this was and how improper this was, but nobody mentioned the word black. You didn't have any police chiefs saying black because that's what they're trying to stay away from. And Acevedo doesn't need to look all the way to Minneapolis just to find some cops who commit a disgusting murder of an innocent black person. Houston is a hotbed of anti-black police violence. Only reason this scumbag was pretending to care is because George Floyd had roots in Houston. He grew up in Houston's third ward. So Acevedo's concerned that the black residents of Houston might remember this. And he's concerned that these black Houstonians might also remember that the only reason Floyd was murdered in Minneapolis instead of Houston was because he had moved. Yeah, they all realize that, gee, we've been doing the same thing the Minnesota PD, that the Minneapolis PD does. Man, hope our own citizens, residents here don't remember that. Things might get turned up here, too. That's what they're desperately hoping to avoid. The police see the nationwide protests, and what they also see is that the white media doesn't have the ability to try to shame anybody or try to attack anyone for it. It's a matter of, ain't nothing you can do. You can whine all you want. It's not going to change anything. They already tried every shaming tactic and every demonization and every distraction they could. It didn't work. So now the white media just throwing up their hands and going, I'll oh, forget about it. The white media has failed to discourage these uprisings. All their attempts to demonize the victims just made things worse. The enforcement arm of white supremacy is trapped on the horns of a dilemma. They can't stop using violence because that's the only way you can perpetuate a system of oppression. And at the same time, the public's making it clear that you're going to stop the violence or the public is going to stop you. This is why the Buffalo Grove police chief was talking about how dignity and respect are the bedrock principle behind the concept of procedural justice and police legitimacy. Now, I've told you about that word legitimacy, haven't I? We're going to be coming back to that word legitimacy a lot because that's at the heart of what's going on here. That's why the cops are trying to figure out how do they get some public sympathy? How do we get some public support? See, they ain't talking all bold about blue lives matter. You know, you don't know how dangerous that blue lives matter. Now they're saying, huh? Oh, you know, we were as disturbed as you are. Yeah, they're disturbed now, right? See, that's what this is all about. Legitimacy. And nobody and nothing can bestow legitimacy upon themselves. You cannot bestow legitimacy on yourself. Legitimacy comes from other people, either by what they are willing to accept or by what they refuse to accept. 
This is why I keep telling you that the law is whatever the people are willing to obey. You've seen it with all of these white people violating social distancing. This is what the rich white-wing supporters of Donald Trump understand. If people just decide to disregard a particular law, then that law doesn't exist. It has no legitimacy. But what goes unsaid is that the reason the police felt that they had to come out with this fake as hell pretend sympathy ploy is because they know that if the people disregard those who write the laws and the ones who are supposed to enforce it, then they have been stripped of their legitimacy too. And while the police are now showing that they're very apprehensive that their own city's population right in front of them is going to become angry at them at the same time the police are not about to stop their crimes. Somehow the people have to be persuaded or tricked into going back to sitting on their hands. That's where the propaganda arm of white supremacy comes in. The white media. But all they have is their usual bag of tricks and it's not working. Oh, they tried all their lies and talking points before. They've tried the, well, let's just ignore the cops who murdered George Floyd. We're just not going to talk about them. Instead, we'll talk about how sad it was and how sad it was. Oh, very sad. Oh, disturbing. It was very sad. People are saying, no, we want punishment. And the white media is going, no, no, punishment. Uh, we, we shouldn't be angry. Um, anger leads to the dark side of the force. So uh, we need to focus on the sad. It's just so sad, so sad. And, and we need to heal. And the people ain't listening to that. And the white media is going, man, the longer we sit here trying to talk around what the people really want, the more everyone's looking at us and going, yeah, do it like we thought, bunch of a bunch of mouthpieces for the enforcement arm of white supremacy, just like we thought the white media is trying to hold on to whatever tattered shreds of what used to be their legitimacy and credibility they thought they had. The lies and talking points ain't washing. When cops were not going to prison for their murders, the white media patted itself on the back. Oh, the white media thought they were in the driver's seat, just assuring themselves that they were invincible. And hey, the people believe whatever we say. And if we refuse to talk about how racist these cops are, if we don't go ahead and give you the rundown of Daniel Pentaleo's criminal record or Darren Wilson's or Michael Slager's, if we just ignore them, well, the public will look and go, well, these guys, they must be clean cops. Otherwise, the media would have come out. Nah, white media is realizing, hey, Somebody has found a way to get around the white media filter and they're bringing the people the truth. And more importantly than that, the people are acting on it. The tide has turned and the white media marginally has altered some of its rhetoric. They're desperately trying to hold on to whatever few brain dead pea brains out there still put any stock in what they say. They know that they're circling the toilet bowl toward their own eradication. The white media knows that they're circling the toilet bowl of extinction. But they're trying to keep from being swept away just yet. So they got to backtrack a little bit, marginally. You see, the police aren't the only one who the public has stripped of its legitimacy. But the enforcement arm of white supremacy is worried about a domino effect. They see that it's already starting to seem to cascade in different places. The police realize they better say something to get on the good side of the public because the next murder their own local police commit could go the way of Minneapolis, too. They understand that. As I told you, we stand at a pivotal moment right now. This is a moment where things could go either way, and we can see the bad guys aren't very confident that things are going to go their way. Now, of course, naturally, surely as night follows day, we get the same old phony white media warbling about riots are losing you guys support. You protesters, you're losing public support. They bring that lie now for the longest time. When black people were protesting in the 60s, they said the same freaking thing. Let me tell you something. I already showed you how as far back as polling has gone when it comes to issues of relevance to black people, the two thirds of the population always say that they're opposed to it. Two-thirds of the population opposed to Dr. King's March on Washington. Two-thirds opposed to the Freedom Riders. Two-thirds opposed to Colin Kaepernick. Two-thirds opposed to Black Lives Matter. They always, there's just this two-thirds of idiots who are just opposed to anything that they think might be of help to black people. They're just automatically against it. So the riots are losing you support. You can't lose what you never had. And that's what the white media doesn't want you to hear. You can't lose what you never had. And the people with nothing to lose 
are a people with nothing to lose. After Dallas and Baton Rouge, it's the white media who's lost the public support, and they realize that. They're still putting up a brave front, pretending like they're still in charge. People believe what we say. We're, you guys are losing support. Whose support? The white supremacist in the newsroom of CNN or MSNBC or Fox? Is that whose white support we're losing? Are the protesters losing the support of racists like Anderson Cooper and Brooke Baldwin and the rest of the trash on cable news? Is that whose support they're losing? Well, you ain't lost very much. They lost the support of some white talking heads on cable TV and gained the support of the masses. You look at the size of those crowds the last few days getting bigger every night. Thousands of people, truth be told, probably tens of thousands. Many of them, you see, they're out there day and night standing in the rain. You see the videos, you got the cops who are in there like 30 deep, and you got an entire neighborhood running them out. It looked like some sort of bizarre United Colors of Benetton ad. And on a side note, yeah, you had a lot of white and Hispanic folks who just wanted to be able to give the middle finger to the police. But the truth is, it's the black folks as usual who did the heavy lifting. Everybody else swinging on our coattails. Except when it comes to looting, you'll find there's a disproportionate number of whites and Hispanics who are doing the looting. If For the people who are concerned about that kind of thing, I'm not. The white media's pathetic talking points only play with the handful of dead-ender white supremacists who they're trying to cater to and trying to pander to. Violence begets violence. And lawlessness begets lawlessness. The lawlessness did not begin in Minneapolis. In fact, what the protesters are doing, what the uprising is doing, is trying to establish order, trying to establish law. Law means rules that everyone's governed by. Right now, what you have is one set of laws for white people in general, one a totally opposite set of laws for black people, and no laws, is no op, absolutely no restraints or rules for any white person with a badge. That is the very definition of lawlessness. What's happening in Minneapolis and other places around the country happens to be a crack down on lawlessness. The citizens are cracking down on the criminals. They're cracking down on the lawbreakers, cracking down on disorder. They're making it clear there's not going to be any more of these police killing of innocent people in the streets. They're, they're putting an end to the bloodshed, putting an end to the violence. And they're using as much force as is necessary to make the point. The violence didn't start with the burning of a target or an auto zone. The violence started with the murdering of black people in the streets. That's the only violence anyone should be concerned about. Everything else is just property damage. Get yourself a good insurance company. You got that handled. But the white media is trying to make it seem like, oh my God, they set fire to an auto zone. And what would we do without auto zone? But of course, the white media tries to make some sort of false equivalence between burning an auto zone and murdering, a, torturing a black man to death by slow strangulation. And they're not pointing out how horrifying it is that this bastard has yet to even be arrested, much less charged. The white media is not very concerned about that. It's a matter of, well, we need to be concerned about the riots. Not a riot, an uprising. But the white media is bemoaning its own obsolescence. That's because they are part of the government. Not because I say so, but because they said so. They brag about being the fourth estate. Fourth estate means the fourth branch of government. They brag about it. We're the fourth estate. Well, we are the fourth estate. Now, how the hell are these guys a branch of government? You can vote for the president. You can vote for members of Congress. But you can't vote for the head of CNN. You can't vote for who's going to be a news anchor on MSNBC or Fox News or any of these other places. What kind of branch of government is set up to be completely and thoroughly unaccountable to the very people whose lives their activities affect and whose lives their activities often end? The white media has been a nonstop cheerleader for the murder of black people in the streets. They have been the official PR wing of every racist cop in America. And every out-of-control policing agency in the nation. The white media them boldly and gladly just carrying their water and repeating their PR lies root and branch. 
the white media's had a good old time doing that. Thinking they were getting away with murder because they thought that they were. And their mission is to maintain white supremacy, not to question it. And when they see some group threatening white supremacy's control, the white media knows their job is to attack that group. But they've tried that. They spent decades demonizing the victims and refusing to call out the anti-black killers. And this has resulted in the white media being irrelevant. That's what happens when you're out of touch. When the people are saying one thing and you're saying something else thinking, well, I got a media megaphone and that means that you ignorant rubes, you guys will fall in lockstep with what I say, but they don't. This is what happens to you. People know what the white media is going to say. They know the white media script and they're not listening to it. Last night or so, they had some idiotic so-called town hall, just another one of those studio shows that the white media likes to put on. Stage managed and scripted. You had Joy Reid and Chris Hayes, and you even had Tim Wise and some other idiots giving the same old white media talking points about feelings and inherent bias and getting past colorblind and respecting people's rights. All the other, just the irrelevant hot air that they blow, not one of them, not even one of them ever bothered to say anything about punishment or hard time. Nobody was sitting there saying that. Instead, it's a matter of, let's talk about feelings and black lives matter. That's what the white media wants because they know that that doesn't change anything. You start talking about punishment, that changes things. Joy Reid said it was amazing that there still were not any laws on the books to punish people for calling the police on people just for being black. All of these, you know, I called the cops on you because of a barbecue or what have you. Why are there no laws to punish them? First of all, there are. Calling in a false report is a crime. And the police do arrest people for it occasionally. But you see, Malcolm X talked about this way back in the 60s, that whatever law you could want is already on the books. So talking about adding a new law is meaningless. The problem is the prosecutors are by and large diehard white supremacists who refuse to enforce the laws that already exist. All you have to do is enforce the laws on the books and you can stop this crap and that's the problem. Now, if you want something that would be a novel idea, a law that gives black people civil authority to sue someone for calling the police on them, that would be something new, but that would require us running out all these bootlicking black political puppets and getting people who are B1 into the political arena. I told you that's one of the things that we got to put on the to-do list for 2020. You got to get some folks to do some pioneering for the black agenda, people that we chose. But just understand, when the white media trots out that line about, oh, these protesters, now that these guys have resorted to property damage, they have lost public support. Did you see anybody who was out there giving public support before? There's been uprisings in Baltimore and Ferguson, and the result is that the cops are finally going to prison. See, when you see the white media telling you not to do something, that's how you know you're on the right track. When's the white media ever given black people advice that's actually put us in the driver's seat or given us an advantage or given us anything that we want? They don't. So if the white media is saying, you guys, you need to stop doing such and such, that lets you know, ah, so this is having an effect is what you're saying. They want the protesters to put an end to the uprising because the uprising is being effective. The white media's pathetic Jedi mind trick is falling flat and they don't have any new material. They're still repeating the same old lies that they've been recycling since the L.A. riots in 91. That these people, why these people, they're talking about black folks, they're, de they're destroying their own homes, their own neighborhoods, why they're out of control. Since when the hell has a Target or a Cubs grocery store or a freaking auto zone been black folks home? Black folks don't even live in that freaking area. What black person even owns a Target or a Cubs grocery or an auto zone? No, what this is is white people who are trying to say that to each other. This is what they always say when they feel powerless. When they see black people standing in their own power and see black people showing, putting the arm on white supremacy, you always got some folks who are trying to make themselves feel better about it. They take an L and they try to make it seem like, oh, well, well, these black folks, they actually, they actually lost. You know, it was, the, it didn't hurt us at all. See, the white supremacists, they can't stop the uprising. They've been reduced to nothing more than helpless bystanders. 
So they try to comfort each other. They try to assuage each other's fears. They're scared right now. The white supremacists, their knees are knocking, their teeth, well, what few rotted teeth haven't fallen out due to meth use. The few teeth that they got in their, in their freaking rancid, stinking mouths are chattering. And they're scared because they're seeing something that they cannot stop, have no control over. You see the video, the cops, they're fleeing in disarray. So they're trying to comfort each other by saying, this doesn't affect us. This doesn't affect, this doesn't change anything. Uh, this has nothing to do with us. Why? Nothing's changed for us. The world is still flat. That auto zone belonged to black people. It was black people who owned that target. Why are they destroying their own target? Black people own that target. That's what they're trying to do. That's what they're trying to tell themselves so that they don't pee their pants again. When white supremacists take an L, they need someone that they can retaliate against, but they can't do that in this case. They brought in the enforcement arm of white supremacy, and you've seen the video. They, the people laid siege to Minneapolis PD's third precinct, and the cops were so scared they had to board up their own freaking windows. And when the cops called themselves going into these neighborhoods, they're like, we, we came in here in numbers. And the people are like, yeah, and you're going to be leaving in numbers, too. You're going to be running out of here in numbers. The cops hightailed it. They're sitting here going, oh, man, sure didn't expect that. Yeah, that's what's going on. And every white supremacist in America is quaking in their boots now. Oh, I thought the white supremacists, weren't they the ones always talking about how if the government is against the people, then the people have every right. A government that's scared of the people is liberty. Didn't old TJ say that? Or some other dead white supremacist who owns slaves, you know, some other slave-owning scumbag. Oh, the white supremacists never get tired of that line until it's black people who intimidate the government. Until it's black people putting the fear into the government. Alex Jones, oh, as far as he was concerned, America's a police state. America's a police state. Oh, arresting people. Oh, the police are out of control. They've got all power. They can come and kill you anytime you want. Until black folks started standing up, then Alex Jones all of a sudden backed the badge. Blue lives matter. I stand with the cops. You see how quickly that scumbag's tune changed. Shows you where he's always stood. So they all lie about they're destroying their own neighborhood. Uh, nobody's going for it. Nobody believes it because everybody knows that it's a lie. In fact, the white media, except for a few morons online, even the white media by and large, broadcast media, they're not even trying that. Now, you don't get to say that Minneapolis is some bastion, some enclave of black people. You don't get to sit there and say that it ain't. You don't get to pull the Detroit script. And when the white media doesn't get to resort to one of its pre-canned narratives, they don't have anything to say. You see, white power refuses to admit when it's taken an L. But that doesn't mean they haven't taken one. Our problem is we don't keep pressing the advantage when we have it. When white supremacy takes an L, we keep giving the bastards time to regroup and recover. And because of this, they've always been able to pretend that they didn't take an L because we let them slink off to lick their wounds and live to oppress us another day. So there's a whole lot of lies being put forth by white supremacists right now at this moment in all arenas of society, trying to get black folks to just basically sit down and be quiet. And well, when the cops kill you, that's just the, that's just the cost of you being in the United States. One popular lie that you get from the right wing Alex Jones type is that they, whomever they are, want to divide us by race. Oh, well, you people shouldn't be angry. Don't you know that they just want to divide us by race? Well, who the hell is they? If by they you mean the police, okay, fine. But they're not calling out the cops, are they? And you know something else? This country has never been united by race. Not for a single day in its entire putrid existence. The United States has always been divided by race. It didn't just get divided this year. And they are the people who founded the United States and the landed gentry who were running the cesspool before 1776. That's who they are. And they are also this every idiot who's ever said they want to divide us by race. Yeah, have you ever noticed that the same people who trot out that line of bull, these are also the same white people who say that they want to live in all white neighborhoods. I want to be around my own kind and that white people are losing everything. These are the same ones who are being racist as hell the other 99% of the time. They only drag out that pathetic, they're trying to divide us along lines of race whenever they see black people rising up. 
Whenever they see black people getting brolic, then all of a sudden they're trying to do, you know, no, you don't want to do that. They're trying to divide us by race. Sure, because up until this week, the U.S. has just been one big happy kumbaya love fest. Why, who ever heard of racism before this week? Now, these same people, you notice how they never say, hey, they're trying to divide us by race whenever it comes time to talk about the alt-right. Yeah, whenever you got Dylan Roof and his pals out there killing black people, nobody says, hey, these guys are trying to divide us by race. Nobody says these alt-right characters, these white supremacists, these right-wingers, they only bring that out whenever they're talking to black people. Their way of wagging their finger at us. They never tell David Duke, hey, don't you know that you're trying to divide people by race? We don't want be you, you. They're trying to divide us by race. They never they never pull that line at any other time. They never say it to anybody else. And what's happening is black people are letting them know you ain't going to be saying that mess to us. And as for public support, we all know that that's white code for, you know, you darkies better um, stop making any noise. You better suffer in silence or we won't do anything for you. We being what? The, the dominant society. We're not going to do anything for you if you guys, if you guys get on our bad side. You better, you better stick to, to Martin Luther King quotes and, a, and walking in circles protesting. That's, that's all you better do. It better not go any farther than that. Family, let me tell you something. Power is not given. It's taken. And you don't have an opinion poll or put your finger to the wind to see if there's going to be any closet bigots, otherwise known as white moderates, who might get their noses bent out of joint because you're finally getting yours. We're not waiting for white liberals to get off their butts and start living up to their racial rhetoric. And we're certainly not waiting on white conservatives to discover religion and tear down the very white supremacist apparatus that they themselves have been cheerleading for the longest time. White supremacy responds to the amount of sustained pressure that it's put under. We put the arm on the bastards, they'll back down. You saw that in Minneapolis. They didn't hold the line, they broke ranks. All it took was some kids in the streets saying this far and no farther. Better yet, you came too far already. Now you got to go back. They're getting pushed back by children. That's part of the reason why I have no patience for some of these fools online who call themselves criticizing the kids who are leading this uprising. I told you that the um, millennials and Generation Z, I told you that those guys, they may be imperfect, but by the same token, at least they're getting off their butts and doing something. So I won't have any Gen Xers calling themselves running their mouths and saying, well, they should be doing this and should be doing that. Let me tell you something. If you got something to say about them, why don't you get your raggedy behind out in the streets and lead by example? Since apparently you know how it's supposed to be done. But nah, you ain't going to be doing that. So shut up. If you ain't going to be out there in the streets, just keep your mouth shut. You don't get to sit there from behind a keyboard and decide that you're going to be doing some Tuesday morning quarterbacking. I say Tuesday mo morning because these clowns came in too damn late to be a Monday morning quarterback. Whenever we have pushed back against white supremacy, what happens is they wait to see if we're going to continue pushing or if we'll stop. And in every case, black people have stopped. Dr. King talked about that when he said that the white powers that be dismiss black uprisings as just the Negro needing to blow off some steam. And he was talking about how in the 60s things need to be different. And the reason that they've been able to convince themselves, oh, there's just some Negroes who have decided that they're gonna, that they, they've just decided that they gotta vent a little bit. The reason that keeps happening is because our efforts always keep coming to an end. Let me be frank here. A lot of you have made some hay out of the so-called allies who are in the streets. You know, anytime you see an, a non-black person who's willing to stand within 20 yards of you, you want to immediately christen them an ally and elevate them to black leader status. That's what too many black folks automatically do. The truth of the matter is they're just there because it's something for them to do during the pandemic. As far as they're concerned, hell, this is a good time to be had by all. Practically every one of these white teenage and 20-something and 30-something gatherings devolves into some sort of organized violence. With a whole, I mean, why do you think they got that whole thing with the Wicker Man and, or Burning Man or whatever? You got these universities where they have these huge freaking bonfires. They love setting stuff on fire. 
to them, this is just a freaking part. This is a party without the food. That's and that's why they a lot of them decided to break into Target. They were like, oh, we got we got a case of the munchies. Hey, there's Target and there's a Cubs grocery store. Let me tell you something, black folks. When it comes time for you to defend yourselves or to defend other black people from pr police brutality, those white supporters who were out there in the streets, most of them with their cell phone cameras up, while, while you had the black kids putting in the work, these are going to be the very first people to cut and run. They'll be the very first ones to condemn you. This is not about how much white support we can get. This is about how much black effort we're ready to put forth. When you see some thugs with badges strangling someone, when you see them dogpiling someone and the person saying, I can't breathe, it's your responsibility to step in. That person needs help, and you are help. When you see some thug with a badge brutalizing a black person, it's your responsibility to step in. You're not children, and I won't talk to you like children. You understand that the authorities are a gang of anti-black racists. You need to also live like you understand that reality. In Louisiana, just today, you had a police officer who was fired because he got caught on social media saying that it was, quote, unfortunate that the coronavirus hadn't killed more black people. This is who carries a badge and a gun in this country. And the DAs, judges, and federal authorities are just as racist as they are. They're on the side of the white supremacists. So, what's going to have to happen is black people are going to have to be on each other's side, and we're going to have to have each other's back. Who watches the watchers? The people. It is lawlessness when you have individuals who are allowed to just run up on somebody and murder them in the streets. That's lawlessness. That is complete and thorough lawlessness. And when you have the authorities engaging in open, rampant carnage, the citizens have a right and a duty and an obligation to defend themselves and to defend their fellow citizens from state violence, because that's what this is. When the police are assaulting and murdering people, you're not supposed to stand around like a potted plant. You're not supposed to be just be standing there like you're helpless. You're not. You're not supposed to be yelling and taking cell phone video. That's what schoolgirls on a playground do. White power has conditioned you to think that you better not protect yourself if the police decide that they're just going to strangle you to death. Well, ain't nothing you can do. And the white media, along with YouTube and social media, they don't want people saying you have a right to defend yourself. You ain't got to just stand there and be killed. And you don't have to just stand there and watch other people being killed. White power in the form of the white media censors and attacks anyone who tells you you have a right to self-defense. You have a right not to be attacked by someone with a badge and that citizens have every right to protect one another when they see each other being attacked or see someone who's in the act of trying to murder a fellow citizen. You have the right to protect your neighbors. You have a right to protect people. The right of self-defense doesn't get neutralized just because the attacker or the assailant or the would-be murderer carries a badge. You don't have to ask anyone's permission to safeguard your life or the lives of your loved ones or of a fellow citizen who's being attacked by thugs who happen to have badges. You don't, you don't have, a, you have a, no obligation to just sit there and go, hey, no, we can do. The police have no authority. Authority itself doesn't exist. Authority is a largely unspoken agreement between the people and certain institutions. If the people choose to do what the police say, then the police have authority. But their authority doesn't come from them. It comes from the fact that the people have chosen to accept these guys who routinely murder black people in the streets. Well, it's like, well, the cops said move, so we better do it. Well, why are we doing it? Uh, well, uh, he, he, he's, he's got a badge, and, and, and that's, that's pretty much all. And this is crucial to white power because the only reason, the only reason that all this white supremacist lawlessness is going on is because the people are playing the game of life by the white supremacist rules. When the white supremacists say, jump, you say how high. When they say you're out of bounds, you obey. You bow to the white supremacist authority. Or rather, you refuse to assert your own. Authority is just another word for obedience. 
Police talk about authority all the time as a euphemism for that. When they say, so-and-so was questioning my authority, they understand that what they're really saying is, you better not question whether or not you should obey me. That's what they're saying. This person was questioning whether or not he should obey me. If you stop obeying, then the authorities have no authority. The oppressors know that. And that's what comes down to legitimacy. People do not obey what they see as illegitimate. And the police have destroyed their legitimacy. Black Lives Matters damn sure didn't do it. And the black media didn't destroy the police's legitimacy. The police destroyed their own. And the white media is trying to keep someone from saying that. They don't want you to hear the words that I'm telling you. Because the words that I'm telling you would change things. And if you look at the people who own these tech companies, you look at the people who own these multinational corporations, you look at the people who are in political office, they are all corrupt as hell. They got their own little corrupt machines going. And the main reason these machines go is because of the fact that when the very corrupt people who are ruining and wrecking and taking your lives say that you shouldn't do anything about it or you should go through their system. If you're working outside of our system, that's wrong, buddy. And you go, OK. You see, the white media thought they'd program people to accept the police line that after every murder, you got to go along with whatever the police say. Well, you may not like it or not, but this is the only system we got. Well, the system can be changed. And it ain't the white media's word that changes it. It's the people's actions that can change it. This is crucial to white power. There will always be people who refuse to accept oppression. So to crack down on these dissidents, the oppressors absolutely require a dedicated apparatus whose sole purpose is organized violence. In other words, an enforcement arm. But the real purpose of the enforcement arm of white supremacy is mass intimidation and control. There have to be these occasional, these occasional displays of brutality and shocking death in the streets just to show people, in case you guys get any ideas that maybe you won't obey, just to let you know, see, we could have killed some guy who was standing here shooting guns or whatever, but we got to make sure that it's an unarmed person just so you know we can just kill you at any moment. Why is it that people sit on their hands while they're robbed of their possessions? Why should they sit on their hands and be robbed of their opportunities in life? And be robbed of their lives themselves? Why should people stand there while billion-dollar crooks like the Koch brothers and the Jeff Bezoses and the Bill Gates or any other old white guy to say that they own everything while everybody else doesn't? Why should people accept that? Why should people not look and say, hey, there's plenty of land here. I'm staking my claim and that's all there is to it. Why should any intelligent group of people abide by a system where they know the bad guys have merely declared that they own everything? They arbitrarily give one another things and resources that they didn't pay for and shouldn't actually be theirs. And they tell everybody else, well, this is just the way it is. We are saying that this is legitimate because we said so. Why do people accept that? Why do they accept the blatant injustice system? It's because everyone knows that if you decide that you're not going to obey what the so-called white authorities that be say, well, they have a group of heavily armed thugs at their disposal whose sole purpose is to exercise violence. You see, that happens to be the unspoken threat behind every illegal, unconstitutional, and immoral law that these white supremacist policymakers write up. This is the unspoken threat behind every illegal and unconstitutional judicial ruling. Whenever they decide that we're not punishing people who have clearly committed murder, this is the unspoken threat behind it. Well, if you decide that you don't like it, we've given the enforcement arm of white supremacy the most advanced weapons that we can. We give them military grade equipment. We have decked these guys out as if they need to be ready to take Baghdad again. We've gone ahead and done that just in case you decide that maybe you're going to change things. If you decide that you're going to disagree, if you decided that you're not going to play the game of life by white supremacy's rules. White supremacy's main goal is to maintain the status quo that they've put in place. 
Corruption is not a natural state. Lawlessness is not a natural state. It has to be imposed upon people. People have to be forced to accept corruption. Because when you have corruption, what you have are individuals who are not pulling their weight. They are either incapable or unwilling or an odd combination of both. These are the lazy. These are the deviant. These are the devious. And they're not willing to pull their weight. They create a fundamental vacuum, a fundamental imbalance. And the only way that they can keep drawing breath or the only way that they can keep having another crumb of bread to eat is by trying to put a system in place that will feed them for nothing. And that's where corruption is. That's where it comes from. That's the purpose that it serves. It's an artificial life support system for the lowest common denominator of the society. And that being the case, they absolutely require for it to be in place. Because you don't have a harvest without work, and there's no way to get out of the amount of work necessary to reap the harvest. The earth itself imposes all manner of rules, and all of it governed under balance. You can only reap what you've sown. You can only enjoy what you've stockpiled up for yourself. So you got to find a way to make it where I'm going to try to put a system in place that makes it where everybody else is going to be working to support me because I haven't produced a damn thing. And in case anybody disagrees, we got to have some organized violence to force them to accept the fact that they have to continue feeding these leeches and feeding these parasites, the Jeff Bezoses and the Bill Gates and these policymakers in Washington and, and in your state capital. You got to keep feeding and ca the forced care and feeding of parasites who are just draining the life's blood from the society and from black people in specific. White supremacy right now, under the current pressure that we've put them under, they're trying to figure out how to prop up the status quo. Do not be fooled by these phony baloney expressions of false sympathy. Because we saw this trick in the 60s. The black baby boomers thought that because white businesses would let them sit at their lunch counters or because their children could go to what were at the time white schools before white flight fled out to the suburbs and private schools and such. The black baby boomers actually allowed the white media and white politicians and bought and paid for black mouthpieces to tell them that they had accomplished something. But when you look and see what you accomplished, you didn't have a damn thing to show for it. That was what they did in the 60s when they saw that the country was on the verge of a revolution and things might actually change. Well, it's a matter of let's con these guys into thinking that they've won something. First of all, tell them that what they want isn't power. What you want is to you want to be in white people's presence without the white people lynching you. Well, at least lynching you five days a week. OK, we'll cut back to four. White power saw that a real revolution was forming when you had brothers like Malcolm and even Dr. King with his planned but never executed poor people's revolution. This nation was on the cusp of what would have been real change, lasting change that would have given black people what we've been owed and would have been able to actually start to put the white supremacist demon back in the hell where it came from. And so what happened was the white powers that be led by the white media started to put on an elaborate show. A white media generated lie. LBJ is giving a few sympathetic words to Congress. Oh, we've got some laws. And the oppressor class was changing their rhetoric, not their behavior, but their rhetoric. And the result of that was the black baby boomers, the few who actually took part in the struggle, because most of them didn't. Oh, how history repeats itself. The few black baby boomers who actually put in some work, they also abandoned the fight. And of course, before long, the old life returned and things went on as they always did with only a few minor, very minor cosmetic changes. The status quo was preserved, which was white supremacy's real goal. To make you think that they changed something just because of the fact that they're not killing Emmett Till right in front of you. Yeah, what they're doing is they're waiting until you go until you go to work. And then they're going to go ahead and kill Tamir Rice while he's in the park. The only ones who can stop white supremacist violence is us.
So the white media pours tons of time and money into trying to find a way to get us to say, uh, well, we'll wait for the very institutions that are run by the white supremacists to stop white supremacy. They're trying to appeal to your inner Willie Lynch chip. And they trot out their bought and paid for phony black spokes chumps who repeat the same white media lies. The goal is to try to find a way to trick us into abandoning the fight. Now, most people, truth be told, ain't built for the long term. Most of them, as far as they're concerned, whatever is supposed to happen, it better happen in five minutes or less. And if it doesn't, they'll gladly compromise and they'll gladly try to settle with the devil, which, of course, means you, the devil's going to say nothing changes. And on top of that, you better give me whatever's in your pocket and they'll go ahead and do that because most people, they don't have perseverance or consistency or persistence for nothing. And white supremacy counts on that. The black community has been notorious for that. This is what the white media is doing is attempting to appeal to the bad habits that we've been showing them for 150 years. Because if we keep pushing, white supremacy goes down. And all the wealthy, comfortable white supremacists, like the ones you see on cable TV, who depend on this sick system for every crumb of their daily bread, they go down right along with white supremacy. Now, I'm sure you probably noticed that I haven't really said much regarding George Floyd. And the reason why is his family has basically been treating this as this is just some police overreach. And oh, how sad they're not saying what they know that they need to say. And of course, we need look no farther than to see that Benjamin Crump is apparently misrepresenting the family. And I don't think that I would be out of school to say that it would seem that the family has caught a whiff of some butter biscuits. And I said it. That's the thing that black folks have to understand. We can go ahead and support whatever uprising that the people are carrying out. We can support punishment for these anti-black race killers without deciding that we're going to contribute to the well-being of these clowns who the white media keeps trying to prop up. I'm like the rest of you. You have to wonder if old mushmouth Crump has some sort of personal team like the second that they hear about any of this stuff put me on a greyhound in minnesota so when it comes to the death of george floyd himself as far as what should be done for him personally i'm going to copy and paste the stance that i took regarding brianna taylor on this one and by the way, wasn't this the same mushmouth crump who just this time last week, wasn't he saying that it wasn't right to ignore all the black female victims of police murder? Wasn't he just last week saying that he didn't understand why it was that we talk about all these black men killed by white supremacist violence, but nobody ever says anything about black women. And yet here he is the very next week representing the family of... A black man murdered by the police. Well, I guess that tells you everything you need to know about Mushmouth's principles now, doesn't it? Whatever gets him in front of the camera, that's about the only thing he's actually dedicated to. This clown, him and Sleaze Merritt, these chumps are the legal equivalents of all those pork chop preachers and pulpit pimps that you see. In fact, that's what their job is. They see that these pastors ain't going to be calming anybody down. So it's a matter of, OK, let's put a lawyer out there and he'll get out there and he'll pretend to be talking as if, oh, we'll get tough in the courtroom. When every time you listen to these clowns, what do they say? They always say, uh, we need a transparent investigation, a fair and impartial investigation. Uh, I have every confidence in the DA's office. That's what Sleaze Merritt was saying just a couple of days ago. That's what he was talking about, the George, I think it was the Georgia Bureau of Investigation he was talking about, the state's attorney or whomever it was. Yeah, these guys, they're there to be a rubber stamp. They're there to put the Negro seal of approval on what it amounts to the burying of these cases against these race soldiers. That's what Sleaze Merritt is there for. He's there to get in front of the camera and say, I represent the family. And the family says they want an investigation. You know, we ain't talking about punishing anybody now. We didn't say anything about anybody getting punished and nobody's going to say, well, these guys should get 25 to life. Nobody's going to say that. Nobody's going to say anything about punishment, but we'll say investigation. We've had nothing but investigations. 
The police investigate themselves and say, we have investigated ourselves and we have determined that we did nothing wrong. After, after very careful looking at ourselves, we determined that you were wrong and we're right. Yeah, Sleaze and Crump understand that as long as they don't take any position that threatens white power, then the white media will continue to promote them and boost them. And hey, they're going to call these clowns civil rights lawyers. You don't have to worry about the white media deciding to stick that controversial label on you. Oh, they won't be sitting there telling anybody that these guys are a bunch of shysters. They're kind of like Johnny Cochran when you think about it. You remember how much that guy wronged white America? I mentioned on my Twitter that one of the protesters had been killed and the police are claiming that it happened either in front of or around a pawn shop. Now, of course, the thugs in blue have no idea who did it. And even if they did, after what you've seen the last week in Minneapolis, well, these guys will be patting whoever the assailant is on the back. Family, whenever there's a flood or some other natural disaster, you always have white supremacists who like to go out and see if they can use the chaos as cover to carry out murders. A lot of the killings that the police and white media claim as being black-on-black -black crimes are in fact white supremacist ambushes. How many times has the white media reported on some killing of a black person and they claim, it probably black-on-black -black crime, there was no suspect caught or even identified. And yet the white media immediately screams black on black crime, black on black crime. The victim was black, so it was sure that the person who killed him was black. That's a white media narrative, a white media lie. They never do this under any other circumstances. They don't assume that if a white, a non-black person is killed, well, it must have been another, someone of their own race who did. They don't just assume that, and they damn sure don't sit there and try to say, uh, there must be something wrong with these people. Why? They're just killing each other in the streets. Because we found that in a number of these mysterious shootings of black people where no, where no suspect was ever found, there's been some of them where suspects have been found. And it turned out that these were some white supremacists who did it. So when the white media tries to tell you that, oh, well, some protester got killed in front of a pawn shop and who knows, maybe he was trying to rob the place. Remember in 2015 in Minneapolis, the MPD murdered Jamar Clark. And there were massive protests then, too. The police precinct where the killers lurked was surrounded by the public. Black Lives Matters was a thing back then, and you had those 4chan white supremacist scum who went there and shot some of the protesters. And those guys, as we know, were being aided and supported by Minneapolis police. Yeah, they were caught and went to prison, but only because the protesters were monitoring the bad guys' online message boards, and they knew that these white supremacists were coming, and they had something to put on their behinds when they got there. Of course, the white media is hard at work trying to see if they can distort and twist and manipulate this latest anti-black murder as a means of tricking black people to the polls. That's what MSNBC was doing. This is a matter of taking all of this energy that's starting to foment change. The fact that they can't stop this thing, can we find a way to divert it then? If we're not able to stop it, can we find a way to, to funnel it in another direction, misdirect it somehow? Oh, if you guys want change, you should be going to the polls. Oh yeah, the white media wants to point out that Donald Trump, he gave speeches encouraging the police to be brutal. But Trump isn't telling the cops to do anything they haven't been doing all along. It would be different if Donald Trump was the first politician to ever come along and talk about the police should be brutalizing folks. Joe Biden was the one who put the main tool that police and racist DAs have been using to prosecute and persecute black people on the books. And this scumbag's running for president. Donald Trump did not say anything that hadn't already been said. You might be surprised that he said it openly, but it doesn't matter. To black people, this is no surprise. But you got these white liberals showing how out of touch they are, just trying to figure out how do we get these black people to stop all of this uprising stuff and get them instead back on a treadmill to nowhere. I know, we'll say that Donald Trump's behind all this. Hey, you guys don't like Trump, right? I mean, you can't deny that Trump's a racist, so you don't like him, right? Let me tell you something. The last time that Minneapolis exploded under the police's racial brutality was 2015 with the murder of Jamar Clark, and that happened under Obama. 
So you see that when it comes to policy regarding black people, it doesn't matter if it's Donald Trump or the first alleged black president. You notice how both of them support the police and both of them oppose black people. Donald Trump didn't sign a Blue Lives Matter executive order. Barack Obama did. So no, the white media can sit there and bring up Donald Trump's greatest hits all they want. It's not going to distract or fool us. The problem happens to be the white supremacist system that elevated both Obama and Trump and protects these murderers, and that system is being challenged. But it's not being challenged through the system's own apparatus because that's playing a game that the system is guaranteed to win before you even begin. And by the way, I could say something about Mohammed Noor, but when you become a black cop, you tend to think you're on the team. And while we can mention Mohammed Noor just for the sake of pointing out the blatant anti-black double standard, what we're not going to do is to support him. Ilhan Omar, who represents that area, she didn't say anything. And a lot of these immigrants coming in from Africa who settle in the Midwest, too many of them consider themselves to be a group apart from us, so they can hold their own on that one. So I'm going to close out this Thursday evening address with some words that I hope are going to encourage and going to give you strength because you're going to be needing both. As disgusted as you were by what you saw, what would you have done if you were there? You sit there and say, oh, what I saw was horrible. What would you have done if you were there? You see, what the white media doesn't want you doing is to think and act for yourself. You're supposed to be there a potted plant while the forces of brutality murder people with impunity. The only relevant lesson that black people should be taking away from the murder of George Floyd is that the only thing necessary for the triumph of white supremacy is for black people to choose to do nothing.